it's Tracy from Two Rocks Tarot. Welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before and welcome back if you have. So today I'm going to be doing a VR to Katie Flowers called um, No Disclaimers, Just Opinions and I will put a link down to her video in my description box along with the tag questions. So let's get straight to it. So the first one is called What Trends Tropes in Tarot Annoy You The Most? So for me it's actually witchcraft decks. There are so many um, cupcake decks <laughs> for want of a better word you know they're all based on wicca as well as if there isn't any other type of witchcraft around uh, it's the same with goddess or mary decks as well i find them to be very dumbed down for want of a better word they um you know and like i said before i call them cupcake decks where you can devour them all and are still hungry so that is one thing um, that really does annoy me. There doesn't just seem to be any real depth to them at all. It's just like that they want to make a, a quick buck by adding the word witch into the into the tarot deck itself. Um, so yeah, I find that uh, rather annoying. Now I have got a, a, a favourite deck which I will show some images in a minute. Uh, and it is um, the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. Now this is based on Wicca as well, but I find that um, for me being an electric witch, I can use this deck without feeling like that I'm being bombarded with uh, Wicca's beliefs and um, laws and, and things of that nature. So I, I, I quite like that deck a lot actually. I read with it really, really well. Uh, when it comes for cards, I, again, I would have to say the Three of Swords, the old, you know, being stabbed in the heart is really uh, just, you know, so basic because I don't actually look at the Three of Swords as heartache. For me, it's more it's more the Five of Pentacles uh, and the Five of Cups. So Three of Swords, I look at it as a new direction that is yet unknown, you know, and, you know, that there's, you know, there's three different ways that you can go. You're not really sure which path is going to be the right one, if it's going to lead to heartache, if it's not going to lead to heartache. But I really don't look at that card as heartache itself. Um, the Ten of Swords is another one. I mean, we, you know, surely there's more images that you can have <laughs> with Ten Swords stabbed in the back. That's why I really like this one from the Celtic Dragon Tarot. And uh, I also love the Magician in this one too, because that's another one that's very cliche, you know, the old, you know, hand up and down, whatever. This this shows a woman who is very much in control of, of what she's doing. Sure, she's got all the elements there, but um, she's very much, I like the way her head is tilted to sign and she's listening, you know, she's listening to what she's, her intuition to her higher self, to the, to the gods or whatever it is, and she's making it work for herself. So as I said, uh, the Empress card, of course, is another one as being pregnant. And this is the Empress card from the Witch's Wisdom. So even though it's still got the Great Mother on it, it's more like it's, it's, the, it's the world that she's birthing. Sure, it's still got the baby there. Could have possibly done away with that one. Um, but, you know, I, I don't mind that one as far as Empresses go. Uh, also, um, I'd have to say, uh, I, can't, I haven't got the deck anymore, but there used to be a vice versa. I think it was a tarot deck. And that had a very young empress in there, and there was a lot of kick up and fuss about that as well. But I actually really identified with that young empress because I actually looked like that when I was younger because I was 21 when I had my first daughter. So I was a fairly young mother, so I can actually I could actually identify with that. But um, you know, each to their own. It's it's a it's a funny card. It's whatever you identify, but I could identify with that one. My biggest peeve in tarot is ageism in tarot. Once you tend to hit 30 or even younger, actually, I'm going to go even younger, I'm going to say about 25, you're pretty much ignored. <laughs> so all the tarot decks that you see have got, you know, there's, there's a young people in it, except if it's the old cliche hermit that's not young um, and the, um, what else can I think of? You know, there's a couple of them that are, uh, always portrays slightly older, but I have to say ageism is a big, big um, peeve, pee, I was going to say, what well, pisses me off, I'm just going to say it straight out, it pisses me off, because it's like, you know, once, like I said, once you're in 25, then bang, you know, you're no longer recognisable as a human being, and that just goes for general in life as well, you know, you go, you know, people of my age, you go into shops, you get ignored, um, I never forget when I, and I was still actually uh, a lot younger then too, my daughter, she might have been, She's 29 now. I think she might have been 18, I think, when we went into a shop together. They say hello to her. They ignore me. Do you know, it's it's that sort of thing. So ageism in tarot is a big thing for me as it is uh, in life as well. 
I also don't like decks that are really, really different and then they have um, the same, you know, the same meanings in them. So I'm going to put a, one up here. This is from the Isabel Snail Tarot. Now her little white book by Beth Sellowin still has got a lot of right away messages, but I just wanted to, but there are some in here that she does. So she does try to make it different and she does reflect on the art, on her art. She'll put it into the meaning of the actual um, meaning. So for the Queen here, it's got as the world may be crashing around her, this queen continues to be the eptimone of love and compassion to everyone, provided she does not get lost in the cups. So, you know, you can have a different image and you can, and I feel like when they do put different images in their deck, they, you know, it should, the, the book that comes with it should reflect the art, the images that they use. That really, really annoys me. Um, like the, um, uh, the Wild Unknown, that deck was absolutely, that book to it was pathetic. It was just a normal everyday right away meanings. But having said that as well, um, I do have a Windows based um, Orphalese Tarot and I do remember the Wild Unknown in there. Now I don't know if somebody actually else wrote that book, but there was a real wicked book that come with that. It, it delved really deeply into the art and what it meant in, in relation to the card but I've never been able to find a physical copy so I don't know if somebody just on that site because um, you know you can share your decks there if they actually wrote that book themselves to reflect the the images but it was brilliant but the deck that I got because uh, uh, I got the set uh, the book was atrocious it was just it was meaningless <laughs> And again, I'm talking about the ride unknown, uh, wild unknown, I should say, because the second uh, question is, which deck do you feel is um, overrated? And and it is, it's the wild unknown because of the book as well. It's really, really, um, you know, and it was very, very. I just couldn't read with it. I just found it very, very blah. So I actually uh, trimmed and edged mine, and I, I, you know, I tried to sell this deck about three times. I couldn't sell it, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to color it in. And then as soon as I color it in, bang, it started talking to me. So I just used soft pastels and some colored pencils and I sprayed it with a um, fixing spray that I got from Bunnings. It was just a matte fixing spray. And I've had these oh, for a few years now and the color has not worn off of these at all. So yeah, so it just seemed to need um, some color. I'm just gonna try and find some really sort of colorful ones if I can. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what I did with my Wild Unknown. I just I just coloured it in and I found that it helped absolutely immensely with this. I think I've done a walkthrough on this particular on, on this particular deck as well. Yeah, that book that I was saying it really delved into the to the ten of, of swords and why you know why the images were like that. Um, it was absolutely amazing, but I have never ever been able to find it. Uh, in its physical form so yeah so this was a highly um, overrated deck for me and, and that's what I did I just trimmed mine and colored it in and I've been able to use it oh I nearly I did I dropped the whole lot and caught them <laughs> but I've been able to use it now since I've colored it in so there we go so maybe for those of you out there who don't actually uh, relate to the wild unknown try coloring it. It, it it's really worked for me the next question is, what are your least favourite decks you've seen since joining Tarot Tube? So I'm reading because I've got my notes here. And that for me is I absolutely loathe. I loathe Marseille decks. I cannot stand them. I find the colours really garish. I hate the pictures on them. Ugh, I just don't like it. And it's the same with the Toth Tarot. I absolutely can't stand it. <laughs> I don't like the artwork either. Um, I just, you know, I read a lot about Alistair Crowley he he didn't really strike me as the most nicest sort of guy around and um, this is many many years ago and I just yeah I just can't relate to it I just yeah I just don't like it so that's probably my two top worst ones and then I'd have to say anime decks I really cannot stand them either decks that look like cartoons I really really don't like them at all so the next question was, what is one card that has ruined a deck for you? Well, I was going to say that in 30 years of reading, um, nothing, but I tell a lie. I tell a lie. Um, I did have the dreams of Gaia deck, which I promptly got rid of because there was a card in there who was a spitting image of my ex-husband. And every time I looked at that flipping card, I thought of him and I thought, look, I can't deal with it. So I actually gave it away. Um, so that was the only deck in all them years that ruined it for me. I just... 
yeah you know and even now i look at the image and i think oh it looks so nice but i just could not use that deck because of that it, i can't remember what card it was i've been googling to try and find out what it was but it's been you know it's been a few years back now and i can't remember what it was <laughs> but usually no in saying that with i'm going to put a picture up here of the chrysalis tarot or the chrysalis tarot however it's pronounced and um this one is really weird isn't it you see the neck is it's just really odd the way the neck is stuck out but for me um I, I keep them so even though besides the dreams of gaia usually if there's a you know there's a few cards that, that i think oh yuck i keep them because sometimes they have a really profound message for the client that's having a reading and as you know i like to do spirit messages as well so you know if, if i was doing a, a spirit message and i saw that with the neck you know it could come across as someone is having trouble with their neck they could have had a, um, a disease in the neck or the throat or something like that so i don't actually get rid of decks even though i might not like uh, a few of the cards but bar the dreams of Gaia I just couldn't I just couldn't do it the next question is which out of print deck do you do you wish was still in print and for me it's the granny Jones absolutely adore this deck I saw this on the electric tarot oh I don't know 20 years ago or something like that I absolutely love it and that's the only deck that I wish was still in print nothing else <laughs> um another question is what are some of your tarot and tarot tube pet peeves so i'm going to say unboxings there are so many unboxings i mean i love a good unboxing don't get me wrong because that's actually how i found tarot tube i was looking for some images of a deck that i couldn't find on the electric tarot which was my um information epicenter for me when i was looking uh researching a tarot deck and I couldn't find any images so I just googled the images and then uh, YouTube come up and there was, there was Kelly from the truth and story and I thought oh my god there's a whole community out there that loves doing that sort of thing so I don't mind you know because that's sometimes the best way of finding uh, all of the images of the deck if it's particularly if you're looking to buy it because you know not all of us can afford to just go and buy decks willy-nilly we'd like to see what we're buying beforehand so you know I do understand that it's just that you know there seems to be so many channels that's all they do is unboxings what i would really like to see um people doing is is doing an unboxing after they have actually worked with the deck for a while so perhaps not an unboxing but a, a revelation so having a deck that uh you know that they've worked for a long long time i've got a really old review on my i think it's from 2018 on uh, Titania's fortune cards now as of now I've been reading that deck for 21 years so of course back when I made that it was 18 years and that has gone through the roof I think it's an awful <laughs> video because you know the lighting was really bad and you know because I was fairly new at, at sort of doing that sort of thing but because I worked with it for so long it seemed to resonate with so many people so that's what I would like to see. I'd actually like to see people working it for a few months before actually, uh, you know, revealing the tarot, unboxing it, and then, you know, just saying what it's like to work with the deck before they actually do the unboxing. So I suppose, unboxing is a sort of, I suppose it'd have to be a relevation or something like that, you know, or, or deep dive or, you know, think of something else. But it's not that I have you know that I hate them but there just seems to be so many of them and it's nothing worse when you're watching an unboxing and there and then at the very end of it or sometimes I will say at the beginning it was just a you know the creator gifted it to them for us and for them to do a review and for me if you are gifted a deck and um, you're doing a review sometimes it can be a bit biased you know they'll gush on about how wonderful it is and haven't not really worked with it but because it was a gift they feel like they're obliged to say that yes you know this deck is absolutely fantastic and maybe they're not really uh, agreeing with it in, you know in their mind sort of thing or they haven't even worked with it so yeah so that's probably my biggest pet peeve i'd say the uh, number seven is what are some decks you feel should have more recognition and actually I've got an oracle deck here and that's the past lives oracle by Manti Pieces Peterson this is a brilliant deck so much work went into this deck and as you can see it comes with a substantial book as well you can actually just get a pdf I've got both so if I'm working in front of my cute computer I can actually you know just look at the pdf but I, I like a hard sort of with a with a, a deck that's in, in depth as this is I think having a hardcover book is a must and there has been just so much work gone into this particular deck it's absolutely amazing I've done a few videos on on soul lessons I haven't done any for a while because I've been still busy getting my teeth fixed <laughs> so um, 
I haven't done some for a while, but it's it's so so good for reading with. And I'm going to be in doing an upcoming video soon on past lives because there are two members of my family who have got such a deep deep love and connection with each other that I'm sure it's a past life. So I'll be doing something like that. Uh, another one is uh, the Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg. And this is a beautiful deck. And the reason why I think it should get more recognition, I'm just going to read a little bit um, <clears throat> out of it. Um, the paintings for the Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg were done to the exact size. The detailed work requiring a magnifying glass and an arm brace to steady the hand and, at times, a paintbrush with only a single hair. I mean, it's an absolutely amazing piece of, of art. It really, really is. It's beautiful. It was done by Yuri Shakov, um, but unfortunately he passed away in 1989. So the, um, that was his final commissioned work, sorry, and he died on March the 10th, 1989. And the deck was dedicated by him to his friend, Leo Najda. So I think that, yeah, I'm just a shame that something that is so intricate hasn't had as much sort of uh, recognition. Another one is the Vampire Tarot by Ian Daniels. I mean, I absolutely love the images in this deck. To me, by far, it is the best vampire deck that I've seen. But the book is what sets it apart. This book is freaking amazing. It's like reading poetry when you actually read it. He touches on everything from the colours to the roses to the facial features on the vampire to why there's a, a, a bubbling cauldron of blood. He, he absolutely touches on everything. The um, how other cards relate to certain other cards in the deck. It's just amazing. So I don't think that really had as much recognition uh, as it could have because the book is just, yeah, it just blows my mind every time I read it. I love it. It's really, really good. It's at least a good three and a half, sometimes four pages just on the one card because he, he just... Um, relates everything you know that he just yeah I don't know he just puts so much work into it <laughs> and I think this is the final question what are your thoughts on negative reviews I don't mind them at all because at least they are being honest and uh, like a bad film review I often find that people who leave a bad film review I actually really enjoy it so I think negative you know, reviews so if somebody does a negative review I think it's great because they're actually saying what they feel, okay? They're, they're telling you like it is. It's how they feel. It doesn't mean it's going to put me off a deck, but um, particularly with book reviews, I always, before I purchase a book, uh, I've got a Kindle, so I've got like, you know, God, I'm such a big reader. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a speed reader, so that's why I got a Kindle because I used to come back with piles of books uh, from the library and, uh, yeah, and I just sort of we couldn't get enough. So... I always read the reviews, but I don't read all the gushing ones. I read the negative ones, and then I'll read a few of the good ones, and then I'll make up my mind like that. So it doesn't put me off having a negative review. I enjoy it because sometimes, like I said, it makes you turn around and think, uh, you know what, I don't think that would bother me, and I think I'll just go ahead and buy it or, you know, that type of thing. So that's it. So this is the, um, it was a good VR actually. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, good VR. It was a good tag. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. I hope it's a good VR. And until next time, this is Tracy.